Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by enthalpy. You should then be able to draw enthalpy profile diagrams for exothermic and endothermic reactions. And finally, you should be able to describe what's meant by the activation energy of a reaction. Now at GCSE, you'll have seen the idea that lots of reactions involve energy changes. One key idea you need to understand is that in A-level chemistry, we tend not to refer to energy when talking about reactions. Instead, we use the term enthalpy. Enthalpy has the symbol capital H. Now, the idea of enthalpy can be a little bit tricky. Enthalpy refers to all the heat energy that's stored in a chemical system. And the words chemical system mean all of the chemicals present in the reaction. Now, the problem is that enthalpy is very difficult to determine. So instead, scientists determine the change in enthalpy. Imagine I've got two beakers. One beaker contains an acid dissolved in water, and the other beaker contains an alkali dissolved in water. If we mix these two beakers together, then neutralization takes place. Now, neutralization reactions release heat energy. So if we measure the temperature of our solutions before and after we mix them, then the change in temperature can be used to calculate the enthalpy change. The enthalpy change is shown by the symbol delta H. The triangle is the Greek letter capital delta, and this means change in. So delta H means change in enthalpy. And this represents the enthalpy of the product minus the enthalpy of the reactants. Now we can represent enthalpy changes on a profile like this. This enthalpy profile represents the reaction shown at the top. This is the neutralization reaction between an acid and an alkali that I discussed earlier. As you can see, the enthalpy of the product is less than the reactants. This means that delta H is negative, and we show this with a downward pointing arrow. This tells us that heat energy was released from the chemical system to the surroundings. Scientists call reactions like this exothermic reactions. Now in the case of this reaction, the chemicals are dissolved in water, so the surroundings are the water that the reaction takes place in. Because heat energy has passed from the chemical system to the surroundings, the temperature of the surroundings will increase. You'll notice that the enthalpy of the chemical system increases before it decreases. This increase is called the activation energy, and we show that on the diagram like this. Activation energy has the symbol capital E lowercase a. Now in order for any reaction to take place, we start by breaking the chemical bonds in the reactant molecules. Breaking chemical bonds requires energy, and this represents the activation energy of the reaction. The activation energy is the minimum energy required for a reaction to take place. Notice that we always show the activation energy with an upward pointing arrow. And this arrow runs from the enthalpy of the reactants to the peak of the curve. Now when you're drawing an enthalpy profile like this, it's really important that you label the enthalpy change and the activation energy. Also, make certain that you get the direction of the arrowheads the right way round. You also need to write the formulas and state symbols for the reactants and products in the correct places, and these do need to be balanced. OK, I'm showing you the enthalpy profile for a different reaction here. This is an example of an endothermic reaction. In this reaction, you can see that the enthalpy of the product is greater than the enthalpy of the reactants. This means that delta H is positive, and the arrowhead points upwards. This tells us that the chemical system has taken in heat energy from the surroundings. So in the case of endothermic reactions, the temperature of the surroundings will decrease. Again, notice that the activation energy arrow points upwards, and it runs from the enthalpy of the reactants to the peak of the curve. In the next video, we look at what's meant by standard conditions, and look at some specific standard enthalpy changes.